This is the Thank You Ocean Report. Have you ever heard of plastic microbeads? They're used in personal care products such as facial cleansers. While they are very small, they are entering the aquatic environment in massive amounts. They're smaller than a grain of sand in many cases. People are using these products to clean their faces, scrub their bodies, and from there, these beads are designed to go directly down the drain and into our water systems. Anna Cummins is the executive director of the Five Gyres Institute. She says plastic microbeads are generally limited to personal care products. I asked Anna, how many microbeads might we find in a typical product? For example, a single tube can contain up to 350,000 of these small plastic beads. So when you look globally at the number of people using these products, it amounts to a lot of beads. How do these microbeads actually get into the ocean? They're so small that many different water treatment facility plants are unable to filter them out. And this is how we imagine many of these are getting directly into the environment. The bead is unique in that it's designed to go down the drain. Other pieces of plastic that are more familiar to people, like plastic bags or plastic bottles or utensils, are in theory designed to go from the consumer to the trash or to the recycling system. But what's different about plastic microbeads is that they're designed to go directly from our faces down the drain and into our water systems. And what do we know about the impact these microbeads are having? Well, what we know about microplastics in the ocean, and that's anything less than five millimeters, is that plastic in general has the ability to absorb chemicals, things like PCBs, DDT, pesticides, chemicals that don't mix with water, but will stick to plastic at very high concentrations. Now, plastic is petroleum based. So there's this perfect synergy between these chemicals and the plastic, such that plastic microbeads act like sponges for these contaminants. We also know that many different organisms ingest these microplastics and microbeads, mistaking them for food. So the big question now is to what extent does plastic act as a carrier for chemicals from the environment, from the ocean, into the food chain, and winding up eventually on our dinner plates. So what can we do as consumers? Well, the good news is it's very easy for people to do the right thing. Simply not buy products that contain plastic microbeads and look for those that instead contain things like apricot kernels, walnut shells, jojoba beads. When we look at the list of ingredients, if you see polypropylene or polyethylene, you know this is a product you want to avoid. And after interviewing Anna, I checked my own toothpaste to see if it contained microbeads. And yes, it did. That is fascinating and scary. And yes, indeed, there are certain brands of toothpaste that contain these plastic microbeads as well. The place to look for whether or not your product contains microbeads is an app called Beat the Bead. You can actually scan in a product using the barcode and it will tell you whether or not your product is safe. Right now, you're probably saying, I have a product with microbeads, so what do I do with it? We get a lot of questions now from people who are alerted to this issue and wonder, what do I do with my half-empty tube at home? Do I just toss it in the trash? We're encouraging people to actually send these to us, to our office. We'll filter the microbeads out, and we're going to send these to the well-known artist Chris Jordan to take a photograph so we can really convey to the public the enormity of this problem. My thanks to Anna Cummins for letting us know about the issue of plastic microbeads. Now here's your Thank You Ocean Everyday Action. Check the labels of the personal care products you use in your home and stop using products containing polyethylene or polypropylene. I'm Jerry Kay.